Welcome to Jerry Recaps. The story continues. The Namgung clan was the second largest organization in the martial realm after the heavenly demonic cult. It was the center of the Tenth Floor's world that led the martial guild. Not to mention, it was an elite clan that produced many rankers and high rankers. So you're back, a man greeted Hoon's arrival. Hoon walked towards him. It was his father, Namgung Jin Woon. Jin Woon had a beard that was a few inches long, sharp-looking eyes, and a body that didn't age. He was Hoon's father and the man who turned the Namgung clan, which was on the brink of ruin long ago, into the main pillar of the martial realm. You returned early, Jin Woon said from amidst a mountain of documents. Isn't there a lot of time left until the Grand Martial Arts Tournament? Jin Woon asked Hoon. I have something I need to tell you, father, Hoon said. You could have used your kit to contact me, his father asked. I decided it would be best that we leave no records of this conversation, Hoon replied. The player kit wasn't omnipotent. Though rare, there were players and rankers who would hack another player's kit and check their records. And the security of this information was crucial in this matter. Jean Woon raised his head from the pile of documents and looked over at his son. Go ahead, he told Hoon. Hoon said while bowing down in front of his father, Olympus is making a move. I think they found Hephaestus. Jim Moon's hand paused while reaching for his cooled cup of tea, and he stared at Hoon, signaling him to keep talking. Hoon continued, they're preparing for the gigantomachy. The gigantomachy, you say? Instead of drinking his tea, Jim Moon tapped his teacup with his finger. He was reminded of an unpleasant memory. It was a tragedy that all the olden rankers remembered, and the only ones in this tower who remembered that tragedy fondly were from Olympus. Where did this information come from? I heard it from Kim Yuwon. Kim Yuwon. I've heard his name before. Yuwon's name was pretty famous in the martial realm. Isn't he still just a player? How does he know such information? Jin Wun asked. Regardless of his fame, Yuwon was too small compared to Olympus. A lowly player. Olympus is aiming for Kim Yuwon. What do you mean by aiming for? His father asked. The truth is, Hoon told his father about the events that had unfolded on the eleventh floor. Jin Moon's eyebrows furrowed. It was a story that was hard to believe. But it wasn't like he could refuse to believe his son's words. He has been fighting Olympus for a while now, said Hoon. Jin Moon let out a faint grunt. A player who was still far from becoming a ranker was fighting the giant that was Olympus by himself. Jin Moon felt his chest ache. Who else knows about this? He asked. Everyone on my team. Jin Moon stood up from his seat and said, And your team has Gibbons, right? Then it'll only be a matter of time until Asgard also knows. Gibbons was a player who was sponsored by Asgard. Jin Moon felt that a giant torrent was starting up. The act of Olympus and the second gigantomachy. And caught in the middle was a small star that had just begun to shine. Jin Moon stood up and looked out his window. He could feel how busy his clan was while preparing for the Grand Martial Arts Tournament, and he had a hunch that this tournament would be more turbulent than usual. On the other side, Yuan had now reached the 19th floor. He had been rushing quickly through the floors to get as much stronger as before the Murim Martial Arts Competition. You won proficiency of the skill. Divine fire has reached quite high. He is now able to create weapons from the divine fire. The 19th floor trial is a testing field, where one had to, to destroy targets in a single strike. The contribution point is based on the number of targets one would be able to destroy at once. You won with a spear of divine fire started running towards the targets. His eyes turned crimson, and you won could see the trajectory of the flying target. This was a test where you had to hit at least 100 targets to clear it. The test lasted an hour, and the targets became faster as their numbers increased. After reaching a certain distance, you went through the fire spear aiming at the targets. The spear flew fast in a straight line and smashed the target. Embers spread out, and the crowd couldn't hold back their all. The 100 targets that appeared at first were destroyed in an instant. Wow, he actually hit that? I couldn't even see it properly. The testing site quickly filled with spectators. 
He hit all the targets so accurately without missing any even from so far away. The targets kept on appearing even after the first 100. Yuan kept on smashing the targets with a monstrous speed. That is insane. Just how many is he planning to smash? Looks like he will definitely obtain the new record. There was quite a commotion among the players witnessing Yuan's prowess. Finally, Yuan destroyed all the targets that appeared and obtained a new record. The system notified, you have destroyed 1,000 targets. This isn't bad practice, Yuan thought. Yuan knew how to handle a myriad of different weapons, but he was most familiar with the sword. However, Yuan also excelled greatly in spearmanship, and throwing spears was one of Yuan's specialties. A spear made of fire. Because his focus was still weak, it wasn't that sharp, but despite that, it was still destructive. You passed the 19th floor's test. You are now able to teleport to the next floor. You obtained 50,000 points. Messages popped up for Yuan, who was looking at the remains of the shattered targets. He had achieved 10 times the quota required to pass, and there were still about 5 minutes on the clock. However, it seemed that there were no more targets left. That's stingy, Yuan thought. This message should have been happy news, but Yuan was frowning. It was likely because there weren't any additional rewards. There was only an increase in stats from leveling and points. Also, with 100 arcane power so close in his reach, other stats kept increasing instead. I'm slowly hitting the limit. He had reached a point where it had become harder to get stronger from just hunting and getting rewards from tests. It was a dilemma. Yuan didn't know if he should have been happy that his growth was faster than expected or if he should have felt disappointed that his growth was becoming stunted. I guess I shouldn't expect a proper reward anymore until the 20th floor. On every 10th floor, the tests became much harder, but they also came with proportionally great rewards. For example, he had obtained the holy fire from the heavenly demonic cult on the 10th floor. I'll have to stop for a moment. He had now obtained the right to reside on the 20th floor, but the 20th floor's test was quite tricky. Well, technically it was what Yuan had to do in the tricky test. Yuan's arcane power was 99. He was just one point away from 100, and he knew how to get there. The Great Scarlet Medicine Ball It was one of the greatest elixirs that was only made once every three years in the martial realm, and it possessed a value of hundreds of thousands of points. The place where one can get this medicine is the Murin Grand Competition. There are only a few days left now. After finishing the 19th floor trial, Yuan started moving toward the portal. I should start heading down. After arriving at the portal, Yuan didn't head up to the 20th floor. Rather, he headed downwards because it was now one day before the Grand Martial Arts Tournament. The Grand Martial Arts Tournament was the biggest event in the martial realm, representing the 10th floor. Whenever it got close to the tournament, the martial city became chock full of people. The people that were gathered on the 10th floor of Murim were chattering and having fun. A man and a woman were chattering about the Murim competition. There really are a lot of people. There's literally no place to stay, but even if there was, we'd have to share rooms. The tournament isn't the only thing here. There are plenty of other sights to see. You really are stupid. The streets were filled with vendors selling simple foods. People drank liquor, shared food, and debated while looking over the list of participants for the tournament. They continued chattering, it's gotta be Voon. Not only is the Namgung clan the one hosting the tournament, but he's not called a genius for no reason. The Namgung clan ain't that great. The Marshall Guild isn't even one of the major guilds. Do you think it'll be Hargan then? Is he also participating in the tournament? asked the woman. The man replied, of course. He's the best high pureblood in the last few hundred years. I heard that he made it all the way to the 25th floor in a flash before waiting for the tournament. The woman spoke in awe, what a terrifying speed. At that rate, he might even be able to become a ranker in less than ten years. Suddenly, a man came running through the crowd in a rush. He reached his friend and said out loud, hey, I got a big scoop. What is it that made you so late? The friend asked. That's not what's important right now, the man who just arrived said to his group, all out of breath, 
Kim Yuan is participating. One of his group members said, Really? I thought he would have gone on to clear the next floor. I didn't think he'd be interested in stuff like this. Players who participated in the Grand Martial Arts Tournament had various motives. The most common one was to show off their skills and get sponsored by the best guild possible. Countless guilds paid attention to the tournament, so if you did well in it, it was a piece of cake to get sponsored by a guild. After a pause, another one spoke, I doubt it's to get the attention of guilds. Do you think it's for the prize? I bet he's participating, thinking he's got this in the bag. The group of men that were eating now had a different look on their faces. These rankers didn't come all the way down to the tenth floor just for fun. When was the last time we approached you one? The man in the center of the group asked. He was someone who didn't bother with pointless gossip, so when he spoke, the mood drastically changed. The group members replied, it was after he cleared the eighth floor. We sent a messenger, but he didn't even bother with us. I'll personally go this time, said the man with a face covered in blue scales as he stood up. It was Brano, a ranker belonging to the dragon race. Some moments later, at the inn where Yu Won stayed a lot of people kept coming to invite him to their guilds but Yu Won kept on refusing them one by one. They were of different races and different clans, but even still Yu Won refused them without even listening to their words. Brano also joined in to invite Yu Won. Go away. That was what Brano was told at the door after having jumped through various hoops trying to find where Yu Won was staying. Brano had a blank look on his face. He couldn't believe he had been told to go away. He had thought he would get invited in for some tea and have a short talk before he was rejected. So he was dumbfounded at being treated like this. Aren't you quite rude? Brano asked. Yu Won just silently pointed behind Brano with his chin. Brano looked behind him and was shocked to see a familiar face. You're. Brano trailed off. The person who just came said, Aren't you from the twelve earthly gods? I heard that things haven't been going well for you guys, but to think the guild master would personally come. Serial? Brano said in a trembling voice. As a ranker of the major guild Zion, Serial was an archangel who was said to be close to becoming a high ranker. Do you are Kim Yuan? I am from Zion Guild. Are you also going to tell me to go away? Asked Serial, looking back and forth between Yuan and Brano. Serial decided that there was no need for a long talk. Yuan seemed very used to this situation. A ranker from Zion with the position of archangel had personally come to visit Yuan. Normally, Zion would have just sent a player on the lower floors to recruit someone. Could it be that others are doing the same as me? Brano thought. Well, you are my ninth and tenth visitor today, Yuan answered Serial. I see. Though he was visited by multiple guilds, Yuan denied all of them a meeting. This was the first time a ranker on the level of Serial had come by. But no matter who came, Yuan had no intention of giving a different answer. Well, if you by chance have a change of heart, contact us here. Zion will always have a spot for you, Serial said while handing over a card to Yuan. I can promise you that won't happen, Yuan answered, leaving not a shred of hope. Serial was irritated as to how a brat could treat him like that. That was when a new visitor came by and grabbed the contact card. What about me? Should I also go away? Yuan, who was planning on going back into his room, stopped in his tracks. His annoyance quickly left, and he felt a bit comforted after seeing Hargan. It's been a while, friend, said Hargan. You once said the same thing, yeah? Go away. Wait. Really? Hargan was dumbfounded as he heard you one's words. Hargan? Brano thought. A chiseled, handsome fellow with golden blonde hair and sharp eyes. Hargan looked exactly like he had heard. Brano remembered that Hargan was a comrade of Yuan and did the tutorial together. I'm kidding. You can come in, Yuan said, going into his room without closing the door. While following Yuan, Hargan let out a baffled laugh. Your jokes aren't funny, man. The door slammed right at Serial and Brano faces. Serial stood dazzledly and Brano mumbled in a daze, I should just leave. The in Yuan was staying in was quite big. It was one of the best places one could get in the area. After entering, Yuan poured some water for Hargan. 
How did you even get a place like this? Hargan asked. By paying a pretty penny, Yuan replied. You must be rich, said Hargan. Yuan continued, Well, I just keep racking up points. I went through the trouble of stopping my ascension. Might as well rest in luxury. As Hargan was about to take a drink, the door to the room knocked loudly. Is Mr. Kim Yuan here? Someone spoke from outside the room. Someone's here for you, Hargan remarked. Just ignore it. If it's actually urgent, they'll enter by breaking down the door or something, said Yuan. He did not care at all about the recruitment offers and is already quite irritated because of it. You're really laid back. This must happen a lot. You've had people visiting you regularly, but it's been especially bad here. Hargan spoke while looking back at Yuan. He continued, it's probably because of the tournament. Guilds gather around this time in the martial realm to recruit players. Yuan nodded his head. It was annoying, but it was going to be a few days at best, and things were likely going to calm down again once he left the tenth floor. So how did you find me? Asked Yuan, while they sat down. You're a real celebrity, you know. All I had to do was ask around a bit, replied Hagen. I would have just told you if you had asked, said Yuan. But what's the fun in that? It wouldn't be a surprise visit then, would it? Although looking at your face, seems like you are not surprised at all. Yuan thought Hagen would have changed a lot, but he was still the same. A laid-back personality, earnest eyes, and a confident attitude. He was one of the few real ones that Yuan acknowledged. What about your teammates? Asked Yuan. They're resting at the inn. I snuck out to come to see you, replied Hagen. We're all going to become rankers. They all have what it takes, Hagen said with confidence. And his words had a level of truth to it. Some of his teammates did indeed become rankers that Yuan knew in the future. Though I'm not sure about Lee Sung Yun, Yuan wondered. The one unexpected variable was Sung Yun. I guess I can find out by seeing him in person, Yuan decided. There was not much information known about Sung Yun, and he was originally a player who should have died in the tutorial. I heard you pulled something real big this time, said Hagen. Yuan had a confused look on his face. He wasn't pretending. He genuinely didn't know what Hagen was talking about since it could have been a number of things. Hagen continued, I heard you were the one that stopped Olympus from capturing Hephaestus. Yuan asked, How did you find that out? Hagen continued and said, I might not be well loved by my family, but my father is still Zeus. Besides, do you know how many people have become rankers after being in my shoes? Yuan nodded his head at Hagen's words. He continued, I'm able to get a hold of most information. Seriously. I thought you were one really crazy son of a bitch when I heard it. TSK TSK. What were you thinking? I'm impressed that you survived a fight against the ranker, but now you've made an enemy of Olympus. I'm surprised you came here despite knowing all that. You once spoke with a serious look on his face. Well, I've never been one to care what others think. Besides, it's Hera's faction that's all up in arms anyway. Hargan had never been on good terms with Hera and Ares, so he had decided there was no need to be careful of them. What about Zeus? Yuan asked. Hargan replied, you're the first guy I've ever met who says my father's name so nonchalantly. He further said, that father is focused on clearing the last floor of the tower. It has been long since he stepped away from matters regarding Olympus. The tower was known to have a total of 100 floors, but that wasn't actually true. People called players who climbed to the 100th floor rankers, but that was only because the test on the 100th floor hadn't been cleared yet. There was a higher place in the tower, and people referred to the place above the 100th floor as the ceiling. Anyway, Olympus is not happy because you saved the criminal Hephaestus, so you should watch yourself for a bit. When I get a chance, I'll speak to my father and try to put in a good word for you. It seemed that Hargan was unaware of what had happened on the eleventh floor. Yuan wasn't surprised. The fact that a test examiner had attacked a test participant would be top secret. Even Hargan shouldn't be able to obtain such information easily. Hargan was showing goodwill, but Yuan was still disappointed by what Hargan had said. So that's how you see it as well, Yuan said. What do you mean? 
Hargan asked in a disheveled voice. I'm talking about Ajusi. He's known as a criminal within Olympus. After finishing his glass of water, Yuan got up from his seat. Do you want to come with me? He asked Hargan. Where? Hargan asked in a rush. To the first floor, to meet Hephaestus Ajusi. Yuan had some business there, so he was going to stop by before the tournament started anyway. Those words made the expression on Hargan's face change. At the same time, Hephaestus was working on finishing the final form of Dark Divine Crystal. Loud, deafening sounds of hammering echoed. A hand wielding a heavy hammer repeatedly swung it against a piece of metal. That same hand then put down the hammer and picked up a smaller hammer. The smaller hammer was then used to repeat the same task. Finally, Hephaestus stopped hammering, sweat poured down his face. Looked like he had been working continuously on the finishing. He then placed the only partially formed chunk of metal back into the furnace before taking a break. Hanging inside the workshop, the towel that Hephaestus grabbed to wipe the sweat off his forehead was hot and dry. He felt hot and was having a hard time breathing. It had been four days since he'd been holed up in his workshop. Am I pushing myself too far? There was a mountain of commissions he had to complete. My hands are starting to itch. Hephaestus thought back to the enormous stack of minerals in his inventory. Just off the top of his head, he could envision a number of items with over half of them being weapons. However, he was no longer making swords or spears. The only exception was the sword he had made for his savior. Hephaestus looked at the door of his smithy and thought, looking at how the rumors have spread all the way here to first floor, it seems he had gloriously climbed up the tower. He did say, he had come by soon. But when will that be? Just when he was thinking over. He heard footsteps coming down to his workshop. Hephaestus, who was taking a break, got up from his seat. So he's here. Are you here? The visitor asked. There was only one person he knew who entered his workshop without knocking. Not to mention he was contacted recently through the player kit that they were stopping by. Hephaestus asked back, Aren't you supposed to ask that before you just enter? When he saw Yuan's face, Hephaestus had to try and act nonchalant to hide how happy he was to see him. As Yuan reached the bottom of the stairs, Hephaestus got up from his seat and saw that there was someone else behind Yuan. Who's the guy you have brought with you? Hephaestus asked. Oh, this is... Yuan stopped mid-introduction, seeing that Hephaestus's face had frozen up. Hephaestus was staring at Hargan's blonde hair. Blonde hair wasn't all that uncommon, but shimmering, golden blonde hair was. Yuan couldn't avoid Hephaestus's question. But right as he was going to answer, My name's Hargan, Hargan stepped forward and introduced himself. Hephaestus wore a look of disapproval. It was clear that he knew who Hargan was. So your father's son, Hephaestus said. Hargan spoke with discontent. Can't you just call me your little brother? Hephaestus replied, I think the fight between our siblings is a bit too intense for me to be so amicable. Hephaestus turned his gaze to his hammer as he asked, So, are you here to catch me as well? No. Of course not. Not to mention I lack the ability to do so, Hargan quickly denied while waving his hands in front of him. His job might have been blacksmithing, but the man was still a ranker. Hargan might have been a player who was famed on the lower floors but there was no way he could hold a candle to Hephaestus. Then why are you here? Hephaestus asked. I wanted to personally meet you, Hargan replied. Me? Why? Because I can't trust Olympus. Hephaestus's eyes widened after hearing Hargan's answer. One of Zeus's sons had said that they couldn't trust Olympus. Hargan continued clenching his fists and said in a firm tone, Since I was born, I was told that you— my big brother was a criminal. Then my friend told me that he had saved you. Yuan had opened Hargan's eyes. He had shown him that Olympus, which Hargan thought was his entire world, wasn't perfect. That was when Hargan resolved himself that he would believe what he saw with his own eyes over what he was simply told. Hargan continued, I wanted to see and judge for myself. I found out for myself who big brother Hephaestus really is. Hephaestus scratched his chin staring at Hagen. He saw radiant, beautiful golden hair, 
eyes full of confidence, and irises that were the same color as his hair. He looked similar, Hephaestus thought. He could see in Hargan's face the face of Olympus's king, the man he used to respect the most. Hargan had inherited more of Zeus's genes than anyone else. So, what do you think? Hephaestus asked. Hargan responded, I can't really figure out much from only seeing your face. His eyes then darted around the interior of the workshop, and the only things he could see were armor, shields, helmets, and the like. In a short instance, Hargan learned a lot from looking around the workshop. It seems that you don't make weapons, Hargan remarked. That wasn't always the case, right? I know of countless weapons in Olympus that you've made. It wasn't, Hephaestus said while looking over at the sword on Yuan's waist. It was the most recent weapon he had crafted, and he had felt so elated when making it. How long has it been since you stopped making weapons? Hargan's question made Hephaestus close his eyes. The sudden stop to the conversation made the silence feel much longer than it was, but Hargan didn't pressure Hephaestus to answer quickly. Various expressions came and left Hephaestus's face. He looked at Yuan and only answered after he managed to wipe the pain from his face. Yuan nodded at Hephaestus's signal. It was after the gigantomachy. Yuan stepped outside and waited for Hargan and Hephaestus's talk to end. The two conversed for a long time. Gigantomachy. After that word was uttered, Hargan's heart started beating rapidly. The weapons I made pierced the hearts of the giants. The giants were one of the races that ruled the tower, achieving that position through their natural strength and large physique. Hephaestus continued they viewed Olympus as allies. He then shook his head and mumbled, No. They saw us as friends, or both actually. Hephaestus raised his head and stared into Hargan's eyes. Others might point fingers at them for being hideous, but we shouldn't have done so. Olympus only got to where they are thanks to the giants. Such a thing happened? Hargan asked. This is a story that kids nowadays don't really know. You might know if you're an old ranker, but young ones have probably only heard the inaccurate retelling. Hephaestus pulled out the back in my day card. As a ranker who was thousands of years old, there was much that he knew. I was also one of their friends. And my friends got stabbed in their heart with the weapon I had made. That was when Gigantomachia started. Anyway, when the giants started getting ostracized, Olympus declared war against them. Hargan's brow furrowed as he asked, What was the reason? It was political. Others weren't viewing them very kindly, but also by taking care of them, Olympus could take full control of the floors they shared with them. It involved as guardian giants, Olympian giants, and rankers from various guilds who wanted the rights we were fighting over. The war grew and the sound of a sword clashing in the skies spread throughout the tower like thunder. And the ground throughout the tower was covered in the people's blood. The war continued to get bigger, and the weapons I made ended up taking the lives of my friends. You might think it's petty, but most people don't see it that way, Hephaestus mumbled, including our father. They were sacrificed for Olympus to increase their influence, and to wash off the dishonor that Olympus was once an ally of the giants, he said. And was that when, when I stopped doing anything for Olympus and also when I stopped making weapons. Since then, I stopped doing things that benefited Olympus. That is also when I stopped making weapons. Yuan, who had been eavesdropping, lowered his head. This was the second time he had heard this story, and because Hephaestus was even closer to Yuan back then, Hephaestus had shown his vulnerability. Hephaestus had let out massive sobs while he told Yuan about the past. Yuan was certain that Hephaestus was feeling just as torn up right now as back then, but Hephaestus was probably holding back his tears as hard as he could to save face. Instead of crying, Hephaestus clenched his teeth and showed anger. But then a few decades ago, they suddenly asked me to make weapons again. Hargan caught on quickly. Are they? Hephaestus continued, there are still giants left. So will the gigantomachy be happening again? Hargan asked in a trembling voice. They're probably still only in the planning stage, but it's highly likely that he couldn't deny the possibility. There was a reason why some people say that Hephaestus was one of the people who made Olympus into what it is today. 
As such, preparing for the next gigantomachy was a possible reason why Olympus was hellbent on capturing Hephaestus. It's your choice which side you want to believe. It's entirely possible that I'm lying, Hephaestus said while getting up. He didn't have much more to say. I am going to fight against Olympus. Even so, I will fight against Olympus. Hephaestus turned around. He looked over at Yuan and said, I know that you didn't come here just to introduce him to me. The stuff's in the storage over there, he said while pointing to the basement storage of the workshop. Follow me. Hargan didn't follow them and instead stayed inside the workshop. He had a lot to think about. On the surface, he might have seemed like a carefree, loose cannon, but he was actually quite thoughtful. I'm sure he needs some time to process this, Yuan thought. Yuan was aware that Hargan didn't blindly trust Olympus. If he accepts Sajusi's words as the truth, Olympus will no longer be the good guys to him. For Hargan, the pillar that he had relied on his entire life would be shaken, so it would likely take him quite a bit of time to make a decision. He clenched his fasts hard. He could not believe what to do and what to believe. Hephaestus took Yuan into an alleyway. While leading the way, Hephaestus said, he seems like a good kid. It was rare for him to compliment anyone. I could tell why you brought him. He then asked, are you going to continue traveling with him? It appeared that Hephaestus thought Hargan was a part of Yuan's team. Yuan didn't answer right away as he was still thinking about it. You think way too much, Hephaestus grumbled. Yuan sighed and said, I don't think you're in any position to be telling me that, Ajusi. He Hephaestus grumbled. Yuan further said, I know you don't fully trust him yet. Hephaestus replied he's still at an age where he can be swayed easily. Since there's no way to tell which direction he'll go towards, I have no choice but to continue observing. They finally reached the end of the passage. Hephaestus went forward to unlock the entrance. Multiple layers of chains were undone, and a thick steel door was opened. I did end up making it, but a bit of a troublesome thing ended up getting created, Hephaestus said while undoing a ceiling chain. As soon as the door was opened, black-colored mana started to slowly flow out, giving you one the chills. I already named it, Hephaestus said, having disliked the name you one had given his sword. Opening the doors wide, Hephaestus introduced his new masterpiece, This is Kaini. After Hephaestus's proud introduction, you one stared at the black glove that was in the middle of the room. The glove had a simple shape with a plain black color. It looked more like a fabric glove rather than a steel glove. This is Kaini? You one thought. He was surprised by the introduction. He knew that Hephaestus was the one that had named the original Kaini, but he didn't think the same name would be given to a different type of item. Fascinating, he thought to himself. The glove was floating in midair, and it was radiating black mana. As you asked, I made it in the form of a glove. The crystal is imbued on the outside, but it shouldn't be visible, Hephaestus explained. Yuan took a look at the shape of Kaini. To the naked eye, it really was an ordinary glove, which was characteristic of the Kaini in his memories. Can I try it on? Yuan asked. Of course. That's what I made it for, Hephaestus said with joy. He was eager to explain the item he made. These were always the times that Hephaestus looked the happiest. It had a strange feel to it. Despite appearing like smooth fabric, the sensation that Yuan felt at the tips of his fingers was something in between metal and fabric. He had never felt anything like it. Hephaestus knew Yuan had fought against rankers since the first floor, so there was no doubt about his abilities. But that is not the issue. Controlling Kaini is a matter of whether you have the right to do so. It's quite hefty, Yuan noted. Kaini wasn't as light on his hand as it appeared. Even a fully steel gauntlet wouldn't weigh this much. It's very thin, isn't it? Hephaestus asked. Yes. To the point that I can't believe that it's made with adamantium, Yuan replied. Hephaestus's explanation made Yuan look at Kaini with eyes full of surprise. Yuan was once again surprised by Hephaestus's skills as he equipped Kaini with his hand. And in that moment, his vision changed in an instant. The already dark storage room now appeared pitch black. Yuan felt like he was caught in Hypnos's skill again. No. This might be even darker than that. 
Yuan was not taken aback by the sudden change in scenery, nor did he take off Kaini. This was a test from Kaini. A space opened up in front of him, and a large yellow eye appeared. The eye was far taller in height than Yuan, and this eye blinked a few times while it stared at Yuan. You. Who? The eye asked Yuan the question that he wanted to ask it. Yuan was shocked that it could speak, even if it was with a cracking, trembling voice. Yuan just blankly stared at the giant eye. Who are you? That is my question, he thought. He understood that it was Kaini's trial. Kim Yuan, he replied. From a different time, strange, the giant eye asked. Yuan, who wasn't phased when the giant eye appeared, was shocked. He couldn't fully understand because it spoke in broken segments. But one thing it said caught Yuan off guard. Other time. What is this thing? Yuan wondered. Who are you? Yuan asked. The eye spoke on my mouth now. Speak. Yuan instantly asked, Are you saying that you can't speak because you're an eye and not a mouth? It did not answer. It was quite a frustrating conversation, partner. Yuan was confused. Including Kaini, which was made from the dark divine crystal, not much was known about the three sacred treasures of Olympus. They disappeared in the invasion of the outers, and the only information Yu Wen knew were the bits and pieces he had heard from Kronos. Yu Wen wanted to find out if this guy was something sealed inside the dark divine crystal, if it was a medium that drew out the crystal's power, or if it was the crystal itself. Yu Wen was also hoping that this would be the moment he'd be able to properly utilize the powers of Kaini. Around the time that Yuan had mostly given up on talking to it. I don't think a proper conversation is going to be possible. Egg. The eye spoke again. Egg? Yuan thought. Who egg? Where? Another string of words to interpret, but Yuan managed to get the gist of it. Is it asking whose egg it is? And where it came from? Yuan thought back to the egg inside his inventory. A message popped up. Unknown egg rises up. The egg had remained dormant since he had obtained the holy fire, and it had been a while since it had sent Yuan a message. That was when a small movement was felt inside his inventory. The egg started making huge movements and started vibrating. The tower power tried to stop it but it failed. Another message popped up. Unknown egg is screaming. The egg moved for the first time on its own in months. Reacting to the egg, the yellow eye responded with its energy. An ominous black mana started flowing out. It was much thicker and denser than the mana Yuan had been wielding through the dark divine crystal. This is dangerous, Yuan thought, evading it instinctively. Dark attribute mana of this level could easily decompose part of a body on contact. I have to evade it. The man was already spreading out, and there was nowhere he could escape. The mana was moving towards Yuan to swallow him whole. It's too late. Yuan shot out holy fire, with all his strength. There was no way for him to figure out right now how to control Kaini, and with no way to avoid it, his only option was to resist it. Yuan noticed something strange happening in his inventory. Yuan, who was going to resist with his holy fire, ended up momentarily frozen. The mana flowing out from the eye apparently had no intention of attacking him. Then why did I? That was when the dark attribute mana that was rippling out, rather than attacking Yuan, plunged inside the inventory on his waist. A message popped up again. Unknown eggs incubation rate increases. The incubation rate kept on increasing steadily from 14 to 15 and onwards. The eggs incubation rate was increasing, and its incubation rate grew higher the more black mana it consumed from the eye. The reason it woke up from its sleep was likely that it had found a delicious target while it was famished. Yuan's eyes widened. The final incubation rate it reached was 41%. It was quite a high percentage, especially considering how it had only managed to rise 13% after eating Oroki's corpse. The nameless egg that Yuan possessed had come from the outers. Yuan got the idea that perhaps this eye would know something about where they came from. Yuan turned to look at the eye. The incubation rate increases due to the eye. Do you know what this is? Yuan asked the eye which had managed to cause the egg's incubation rate to shoot up. Anything will do, so say something, 
Yuan shouted, he was furious and wanted to know the answers that he had longed for. Wait, watch, said the eye. The shade of the eye started to get faint, and the darkness that enveloped him broke away. Yuan felt the chilling energy that had filled the air dissipating. Its speech started to sound clearer as it faded away. Yuan kept on staring at the eye and stood there dazedly. He spoke out loud and tried to stop the eye from disappearing but to no avail. And with the darkness lifting, sounds from the outside rushed in. Yuan opened his eyes and was stunned for a moment. The heavy sound of a hammer. Yuan felt the shock of the air shaking, and he saw the hammer falling on his head. Ajusi. Yuan shouted in a hurry, seeing whose hammer it was. He was even ready to draw his sword if necessary. The drop of the hammer created a huge rumbling destroying the ground and everything nearby. What? The hammer stopped halfway, and Hephaestus's face became visible as the darkness fully dissipated. Hephaestus looked shaken. Are you okay? He asked Yuan. There were various hammer marks on the ground. It appeared that he thought something bad had happened to Yuan and had been furiously swinging his hammer. Yuan couldn't answer the question right away because he had just encountered near death. Had he been hit by Hephaestus's full swing of his hammer, it wouldn't have ended with just an injury. Hephaestus laughed dumbfounded and said, It is fine if you are all good. Right, how does it feel to use it? asked Hephaestus. Yes, it is good. Well, the material is good. It is as if I am not wearing anything, replied Yuan. It said it would watch me. Those were the final words the Eye of Kaini said before disappearing. But it did manage to say something proper before it disappeared. It was hard to make out the other things it said, but the final part was clear. Well, whatever the case is, it's over now, Yuan thought to himself while looking at the black glove he now wore on his hand. It felt pretty good, with a smooth and soft texture. If it weren't for the weight, he could have forgotten about it and thought that it was just a part of his body. The Dark Divine Crystal. It was an item that was also called a Fragment of Kaini. Who would have thought such a secret was hidden in this item? There are two fragments left. There were three total fragments in Yuan's memory. Yuan tightened his fist. I'll need to gather the rest to figure out what's what. His next objective was now the Trident's Fragment. The workshop shook. Hargan, who was lost in thought, jolted up and ran in the direction that Yuan and Hephaestus had gone off in. What's going on? Hargan asked. Hephaestus and Yuan were exiting the storage room. Who knows, Hephaestus said. The answer he got just made Hargan more confused. Just ask him, though he might actually not know anything, Hephaestus said as he walked away. Hargan presumed that the noise earlier must have been from Hephaestus swinging his hammer since he was wielding it in his hand. Hargan turned over to look at Yuan. So what did he mean? Hargan asked Yuan. Who knows? replied Yuan. Hargan could see an unfamiliar glove on Yuan's hand. He guessed that it must have been a new item that Yuan had obtained. So what does Hyung mean? asked Hargan. You guys didn't fight? Not knowing a thing, the only assumption Hargan could make was that Hephaestus and Yuan had gotten into a spontaneous fight. No, Yuan answered. I had to be sent to the afterlife if I were hit by that hammer. Hearing Yuan's words, Hargan imagined it in his mind and agreed to him. No. I'm saying that because I really don't know, replied Yuan. Yuan genuinely didn't know what the fragment of Kaini was, and the commotion was from Hephaestus trying to save Yuan, sensing that the fragment was too dangerous. That's good then. Did you manage to think things over? asked Yuan. I'm still conflicted, Hargan said while scratching his head. It wasn't that Hargan didn't trust Hephaestus's words. There were people who hadn't had a good opinion of the Gigantomachy for a long time. I think I need to first go meet my older brother and sister, Hargan told you one. And who would those be? It's not like you have just one or two siblings, asked you one. Big brother Apollo and big sister Artemis, replied Hargan. They were two children that Zeus had with someone other than Hera, just like Hargan. It appeared to Yuan that they were closer to each other than their other siblings as they were in the same situation. They must know something, Hargan said. Apollo and Artemis were two of the top ten high rankers within Olympus, 
and as they had directly participated in the gigantomachy, they should have a lot of information. It seemed that Hargan was being very thoughtful and careful about this ordeal. Hargan continued, though I'm honestly not sure. For now, I should just focus on the Grand Martial Arts Tournament. I need to make my name better known for my influence within Olympus to grow. Yuan remarked I'm surprised that you care about things like that so much. It can't be helped. I'm different from Big Brother Ares. In order to create a faction that follows me, I have to keep proving my worth, Hargan said with a voice filled with resolve. Yuan couldn't know how Hargan felt growing up and the current state of his emotions. There's no better stage for that than this tournament. I heard that there are more rankers spectating this tournament than ever before, Hargan continued. In that regard, this grand martial arts tournament was being watched by the greatest number of people in its history, and there was a simple reason for this. The quality of the players was outstanding. Of course, about half of them were primarily interested in U1. Hargan listed the rankers and guilds that came to watch the tournament, and I heard that a few wandering rankers were also present. Oh, right, also. There was also another reason why this tournament was so greatly in contention. Hargan closed in on Yuan and said in a light tone, There is a rumor that someone amazing is coming. I heard that the vice lord of the heavenly demonic cult is going to be there this time around, Hargan continued. Hargan continued and asked Yuan, What about it? Are you getting competitive now? Hargan's words made Yuan's eyebrows twitch ever so slightly at the mention of the vice lord of the cult. But that's me, Yuan thought to himself. He checked his title. Vice Lord of the Heavenly Demonic Cult. It was the next highest position in the cult after the Lord, giving one the power to command players that joined the cult. The problem was that the cult was currently dormant in the martial realm. That meant, they're finally re-emerging, Yuan hypothesized. That was very much in the realm of possibility. The only reason why the cult had been holed up in Mount Heaven was due to the heavenly demon's stubbornness to protect the holy fire. Now that their long wish had been fulfilled, it wasn't strange for the cult to start making moves. And they chose the Grand Martial Arts Tournament as their first stage, Yuan thought while recollecting the heavenly demon's face. He's a sly fox, unlike his appearance. The heavenly demon was known as the greatest martial arts master in the martial realm. Unlike Namgung Jin Woon who just barely hadn't managed to become a high ranker, the heavenly demon had a high ranking even among high rankers. He was an incredibly talented martial artist and the leader who created the current heavenly demonic cult. If the cult has started moving, they'll become a great help, thought Yuan. Seeing as it's the first time the heavenly demonic cult is making an appearance, the vice lord has to be someone really skilled. I wonder if they're a ranker or a player. If they're a ranker, they won't be able to compete in the tournament so I won't get a chance to face them, Hargan blabbered on. Hargan had the impression that the vice lord of the cult was likely a ranker, but that was only natural. Didn't you pass the cult's test? Do you know anything? Hargan asked. It's me, Yuan replied. Huh? What is? asked Hargan. It's me. I'm the vice lord, Yuan explained nonchalantly. Hargan looked stunned for a bit, unable to process what he had heard. But when the gears started turning again and he understood Yuan's words, his eyes widened. You're the vice lord? Hargan asked in shock. Isn't the vice lord a position that's similar to the vice head of a noble clan? Hargan's jaw dropped. He had heard that Yuan was the first person to pass the heavenly demonic cult's test. Hargan himself had managed to pass the Namgung clan's test which was famous for its difficulty but the heavenly demonic cult's test was known to be even harder. He knew that Yuan was an amazing guy, but he didn't know it was to this degree. Was that the reward? The position of vice lord? Yuan nodded his head in response. The real reward was the holy fire, and the position of vice lord was just a bonus reward he got, but Yuan saw no reason to explain everything in detail. Hargan mumbled with regret, his back against the wall. Maybe I should have challenged it. Unlike Yuan, Hargan had a lot of interest in factions. The Vice Lord was someone who was able to wield the power to command that organization. To Hargan, that was the most tempting reward one could possibly obtain. Once this gets out of the bag, 
your value is going to shoot up even higher, Hardin commented. I have no intention of joining any group, Yuan replied. I know that, but the other guilds are going to think differently, Hargan said with a smile on his face. Hargan was quite excited, he smirked and said, You know, tomorrow's going to be quite fun. The day of the Grand Martial Arts Tournament dawned. The Murum competition will be the place where it will distinguish the strongest player among thousands of newbie players. The arena where the competition was to be held was brimming with spectators. There were players from all over the tower, from different clans, different species, and major guilds. There were a lot of players that stood out from the millions of spectators. They were either the heir to famous clans or part of some major guilds. The arena that was prepared for this competition was quite huge. On the fighting platform, there were ten players standing. On three sides of the arena, there were spectators and in the front, there were huge buildings prepared for officials from Murim and major guilds across the tower. A huge message window popped up, notifying the rules of the competition and the names of the first ten players. The spectators started chattering, the players started coming up to the arena. Whoa! They're coming! Who's all here? That guy. Isn't that a descendant of the Seomun noble clan? Didn't he just get to the tenth floor? The stage was massive. It was a special stadium made for the Grand Martial Arts Tournament. And towering above that stadium were seats that could accommodate an audience of a hundred thousand people. It's Yang Wonil, the bastard of the school of the Sapphire Sword. Yang Wonil? Where? Yang Wonil, a player of the school of the Sapphire Sword strutted along with his shoulders held high. It's finally the Grand Martial Arts Tournament, he thought. Wonil puffed up his chest. There are some people that recognize me, he thought to himself. Being called a bastard wasn't pleasant, but people still knew his name as he had been active in the martial realm for quite a while now. I'm finally on this stage. He had been going at it for a long time just for this day. With tensions running high, he looked around. The player that he was most on guard against was the player from the Seo Moon clan. Even if he just got to the tenth floor... A pure blood from the Seo Moon noble clan should not be underestimated. If avoidable, I shouldn't face him directly and work around him, Wono strategized. Players from noble clans, even if they weren't players of high floors, still had a certain level of skill. Wono kept Seo Moon Chang in his mind as he turned his gaze. I don't have any intel on the other guys. Most of them must be nobodies. Huh. Wonil's thought was interrupted as a familiar face came into his line of sight. It didn't come to him right away, but it didn't take long for him to remember who it was. That guy is, Wono recollected. It was an incident that happened while he was recruiting new players on the orders of the head of the Sapphire Sword. It was the guy that humiliated him. It's him, Wono thought with fury in his eyes. He hadn't been able to find him until now yet he had casually run into him at the Grand Martial Arts Tournament. It's as the old proverb says, enemies are bound to meet head-on on a narrow road. He had been honing his skills while climbing the tower. Wono was confident he could easily wipe the floor with a guy who had only recently made it to the tenth floor. As Wono was thinking, you're dead meat, it's Kim Yuan. Someone shouted. That created an instant commotion, like pouring oil onto a fire. Kim Yuan? Really? Where? Who said that? After Kim Yuan's presence was pointed out by someone who knew his face, the audience started their search for him. Kim Yuan is here? Wono thought. Even he had heard a lot of rumors regarding Yuan. There were even people saying that Yuan might be the greatest player in the history of the tower because he was setting a new record on every test. I'm fucked, Wono dreaded. Why did he have to end up in this group out of all the possible groups? Since it's come to this, Wono thought while glaring at his enemy, I'm going to at least cut you down. In fact, it was possible that even if he lost here, things could go well for him if he stood out in the preliminaries since the audience was bound to remember the match where Yuan was present. 10 9 8 A number that was floating in the air started counting down. Wono desperately waited for the number to become one. Finally, the numbers counted down, and Wono leaped forward and drew the sword on his waist. Remember me, Wono shouted. Wono's sword cut through thin air. 
He thought he would cut him down, but his target had managed to sidestep his attack. His attack missed by a thin margin, so Wono moved lightly on his feet and continued with his technique. I haven't forgotten about the humiliation you presented me that day. Wono felt a slight impact on the bottom of his jaw. It didn't hurt much, as if it was a punch from a kid. What was that? Wono wondered. He couldn't tell what it was that hit his jaw, so he decided to just ignore it since whatever he was hit by, he wouldn't feel a thing no matter how many times he was hit by it. Or so he thought, huh? Wono stopped in his tracks. No matter how much strength he tried to muster, he couldn't move. His hand gave out, and his sword fell to the stadium floor. While looking at his opponent's face, he felt a sense of despair. Four things to end right when they had only just started. My name is Yang, as Wono tried to say his name. His body flopped onto the ground. So, who are you? Yuan asked, confused at the guy who suddenly charged at him and got knocked out by a single hit. This young guy spoke as if he had been wronged by Yuan, but Yuan had no recollection of meeting someone like him during any part of the test. Did he already faint? Yuan wondered. He didn't even hit him hard, so he shrugged it off as someone who was just weak. And with that, Yuan stopped paying attention to Wono, who lay on the floor, knocked out and drooling. There were now nine players left. With Wono's surprise attack, people's attention was already centered on Yuan. The players left in the arena started mumbling, What did he just do? I couldn't even see anything. That guy must be Kim Yuan. Are you sure? I heard the rumors. Black eyes and black hair. Dons the pyromancy robe. He matches the description. Then it must be him. All the players in the same group were wary of Yuan. It was only natural since only one player could make it to the main stage of the tournament. Without taking down Yuan, it was impossible to move further on in the tournament. It seems like everyone knows now. Yuan said. He had wanted to take it easy in the preliminaries, but he changed his mind. Yuan slowly drew his sword while looking around at the other eight players, saying, You can come at me one at a time, or you can fight me all at once. A sharp sound rang out while he drew his blade. Yuan decided not to avoid the attention he had gathered. There was a high level of tension filling the stadium. Let's finish this quickly and not drag this out, Yuan announced. With a swing of the sword, mana was diffused into the surrounding area. This wasn't a special skill but instead a simple technique that utilized mana, a form of sword pressure. What skill is this? A few got flung away while the few guys who were a bit skilled managed to defend themselves using a skill. But with a single attack, their formation had been broken up. Yuan started charging towards the players. He's coming toward us. No. He's already here. To the right. No, he's left. Which fucking side is it? As if they had made a promise beforehand, the players tried to cooperate with each other, but the results weren't so stellar. Along with a sword slashed to the chest, a strong impact flung a player many meters into the air. The player came back down, slamming into the ground. Afterward, the other players started to shout over one another. Over here. It's not a sword. Then what is it? It was absolute chaos. Almost no one was capable of keeping up with Yuan's movements with their eyes, but Xiao Moon Chang could at least see Yuan's faintly moving after images. Over there, Chang thought. He could see the tip of the sword moving, but he couldn't react to it. After knocking out all the players, only Chang was left. Chang thought, is he coming this way? The sword reached him a beat, no, a few beats faster than he had anticipated. I'm dead. Chang braced himself. The tip of the blade lightly tapped his nose. It was a light hit, like an adult scolding a child. As he was getting hit, Chang thought, the sword hilt? So he is saying he won't attack? So he is treating me like a child? A kick launched Chang into the air, and he tumbled across the ground. He barely managed to stop himself from throwing up all his insides. Chang vomited blood while hacking and coughing then grit his teeth to endure the pain in his chest. That's at least a few broken ribs, Chang thought to himself. It was impossible for him to continue fighting in this state. 
Heavens knew if he was still capable of fighting, but he had lost his will. Players who had been beaten up by Yuan were groaning and rolling on the ground. Half had fainted while the other half were lying down with injuries. There were no fatalities from what Chang could see. Everyone's alive? He couldn't believe it. This was a tournament where people fought using weapons, so it was inevitable for some to end up dead. However, it wasn't by chance that in such a tournament not a single person died. Is he going easy on us? Chan wondered, unable to believe it. That's when he remembered. Earlier, Chan thought back to how Yuan's sword had a clear shot at his head. He had braced himself for death, but instead of being cut down, he was only kicked. Chan was baffled. This might have just been the preliminaries, but in the Grand Martial Arts Tournament Yuan was acting like an adult facing children. Finally, the first match winner was decided in a matter of seconds, it was Kim Yuan. After his match was over, Yuan waited for Hargan's match. Hargan's fight was the match after the next. In the second match, Hargan had to fight against the ninth player. It was similar to the Yuan's match. All the players gathered together to defeat Hargan, who was one of the most capable newbie players after Yuan. Hargan used his electric attack and rushed into the heated battle and beat down all the players by himself. Winner, Hargan. As the winner was decided, the arena fell into chaos, and all the spectators started shouting and cheering for Hargan. They were amazed to witness such epic fights. The people started shouting, Whoa, he's amazing! He took down everyone by himself. There was another guy like Kim Yuan. There were still remnants of the Hargan's electric attack in the arena. From the AoE electric attack to physical abilities and mana, everything about Hargan was on a level that was not of a low floor player. He really did become stronger. Even Yuan was impressed, understanding how Hargan was managing to rise in the rankings with each subsequent floor. It was an unbelievable growth speed. Yuan had heard that he had just cleared the 25th floor, but his skills matched those of high floor players. His potential might be even higher. Hargan's mana resembled Zeus's the most. From his talent for manipulating electricity, along with his skills and appearance, he was a spitting image of Zeus. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with when he becomes a ranker. Yuan found it worthwhile having waited to see his match, but with that, he got up from his seat. He saw no reason to watch the remaining matches and left. As he was leaving the first floor exit, It's him! shouted a faintly familiar voice. Hey, you stay right where you are. Yuan stared at a man pointing his finger at him. His face was also somewhat familiar. Right, Yuan finally remembered. What was your name? But he only remembered the face. He couldn't remember the name. The man's face turned red from feeling looked down upon. It's Yang Wonil! The man shouted, approaching Yuan, huffing and puffing in anger. Or at least he tried to approach Yuan. Wait, a man standing behind Wonil grabbed him by his shoulder. I apologize. A disciple of our school was too rude to you, the man said. The man's strength was on a completely different level than Wonil's. He was almost two meters tall with a muscular build. It was clear that this man was strong. Yuan got an uneasy feeling while looking at the man. Is he a ranker? Yuan wondered. Who are you? Yuan asked. The man walked up to Yuan and introduced himself. I am the head of the school of the Sapphire Sword. My name is Moon Jubek. I came here to see if you would like to cooperate with our clan. Your clan, huh? Yuan mumbled. Yuan had an inkling that he would be no ordinary player. A head of a martial school meant that he should have at least been on the level of a ranker. For such a person to come here in person. From Yuan's experience, they usually only had one business. I'm not interested, Yuan declined. You don't even want to hear what I have to say? Sobek asked. Are you not here to recruit me into your school? Yuan responded. Sobek looked slightly shocked but that was only for a split second. He immediately returned back to his composed self. It seemed that he had somewhat expected such a response. That's right. I heard that you rejected all the recruitment offers from major guilds, Sobek said. Why did you come looking for me when you already knew? Yuan asked. To be clear, 
The school of the sapphire sword isn't a guild. We might be a part of the martial guild, but we are more of a martial school than a guild, Sobek tried to persuade Yuan. Yuan thought his logic was hilarious. Telling someone to join their school without a test is no different than a guild recruitment offer. In essence, it was asking him to be affiliated with them. I'm not sure if you're aware, but our Sapphire Sword School has a long history. We might have weakened a bit in recent times, but our school can be said to be the first school to continue on the tradition of the martial realm. Sobek went on a long, noisy sales pitch. If you join us, we will be able to achieve everything for our school. I realized at the moment I saw you fighting in the arena. The future of our school is... I wish you the best with your school, now goodbye. You once said while passing Sobek, not interested in hearing him out any longer. Sobek was taken aback. He didn't expect Yuan to just cleanly cut him off and walk away. He did think Yuan might reject him, but not so firmly and easily. He thought he'd at least get a chance to chat over a cup of tea or something. Please wait a moment, Sobek said while grabbing Yuan's shoulder. It seems you haven't fully understood me, Sobek spoke. What did I not understand? Yuan asked. This isn't an offer, Sobek said while tightly gripping his shoulder. Do you understand now? Yuan stared at Sobek. Sobek was no longer smiling, and with the smile gone, it revealed his harsh face. He looks rough, Yuan thought, thinking that his face looked like that of a menacing bandit. If he'd had a beard, it would have been the cherry on top. Mana filled with fighting spirit shimmered around Sobek. Yuan was able to read the anger hiding behind Sobek's mana. Yuan looked at the hand on his shoulder. He had expected such a confrontation to occur at least once, and so he was prepared to have a go in such a case. I'm sure you're well aware of what will happen to a ranker that messes with a participant in the Grand Martial Arts Tournament, Yuan said, his tone shifting. Sobek smiled slyly at the change in mood. Of course I do, he said. So you're not afraid of the Namgung clan? The Grand Martial Arts Tournament was a tournament held by the Namgung clan, the clan led by the head of the Martial Artists Alliance. Is that why you've been acting so cocky? Because you trust the Namgung clan? Sobek let out a laugh. The head of the Jigal clan is my blood brother. Did you really think I'd fear the Namgung clan? Yuan was wondering why he was being so bold. It turned out that he had a pocket ace. Does your blood brother know that his big brother is such a bastard? Yuan asked. Of course, Sobek said boastfully. Now don't be so prickly. I want to have a good relationship with you. If you take your time to hear me out, you'll learn that our Sapphire Sword School isn't such a bad place. Just as he was boasting, Sobek's eyes flickered. I refuse, Yuan said while grabbing Sobek's wrist. Using force, Yuan tried to push away the hand that was grabbing his shoulder. Sobek's eyebrow twitched from the amount of strength exerted by Yuan. This guy, Sobek thought. He knew that Yuan was incredibly skilled for a player on the lower floors, but to have so much strength. This won't be easy, Sobek determined. Sobek strengthened his grip, but as he exerted more power, the penalty slowly started up. Despite that. What the? Sobek couldn't believe it. Little by little, his hand was moving. Yuan was actually pushing away his hand. You asked if I was cocky because I trust the Namgun clan, Yuan said. Sobek started feeling a bit of pain from how tightly Yuan was holding his wrist. He couldn't believe it. He was conscientious in how much strength he used due to the penalty, but for him to get pushed away. No, Yuan continued, I only trust myself. Sobek grunted in pain. Sobek quickly broke away from Yuan's grip. He could have ignored the penalty and used more of his power, but he didn't even have time to weigh his options. Originally, Sobek thought that he just had to crush Yuan with force since he didn't have to worry about the aftermath of the Namgung clan too much. So you're pretty skilled, Sobek commented. It turned out that things wouldn't be so easy. Sobek drew his sword. Sobek quickly started assessing the situation, checking if anyone was nearby. The tournament is going full force, Sobek thought. It'd be at least a while before people started leaving the stadium. Sobek was relieved, 
I'm glad I ordered a guy to be on the lookout just in case. From the beginning, he had intended to use force if you one didn't listen to him since as long as he could somehow take you one to his school, he'd be able to get you one to listen to him one way or another. Let's not drag this out, Sobek resolved himself. Right. Actually, there is one thing. Something I trust, you one said. What? Sobek responded. Yuwen's gaze shifted to behind Sobek. Out of nowhere, a presence could be felt. There was nothing nearby, but in an instant, a presence grew close to them. Sobek felt an odd sensation as if a ferocious beast was approaching him from behind. I thought you were taking too long, sir, a man spoke. Sobek turned his head to find a large man had approached them. His outfit and way of speech made him seem like someone from the martial realm but Sobek had never once seen this man before. The man looked back and forth between Yuan and Sobek before asking, What are you doing here? It was the Heavenly Fist Lord Pung Beklim. The man who had fought with Yuan during the Heavenly Demonic Cult's test politely bowed and greeted Yuan Vice Lord. Pung Beklim's words made Moon Sobek doubt his ears. Vice Lord? Sobek wondered. It was a title he was unfamiliar with and for a moment he thought maybe somehow he misheard Vice Head as Vice Lord. But before that, I thought you one didn't have a martial school that he was affiliated with, Sobek wondered. Then it hit him, could it be? There was only a single place in the current martial realm that used the title of Vice Lord, a faction that was closer to a religious group than a martial school. Based on Empty Heaven, it was the faction that could truly claim to be the strongest martial organization. The Heavenly Demonic Cult. Still, there's no way they gave him the role of Vice Lord just from passing a lowly test, Sobek felt confused. He wanted to doubt the situation, but he had seen it with his own eyes just now. Sobek lowered his sword, and Becklin glared him in the eyes while walking towards Yuan. Having gauged the situation, he smacked his palm with his fist. Is this a fight, sir? Becklin asked. We haven't started yet, Yuan answered. Yuan was naturally speaking less politely, while on the other hand, Becklin was now speaking to Yuan with respect, unlike before. They were simply following the rules of the heavenly demonic cult. What would you like me to do? Becklin asked while looking back at Sobek. Should I kill him? Becklin seemed ready to fight like he was waiting for Yuan's order to drop. An intense fighting spirit started flowing out from Becklin's body and in an instant, Sobek felt minuscule compared to him. He's a ranker, Sobek realized. And he realized that Becklin wasn't just an ordinary ranker but a cut above most rankers in the martial realm. Sobek tried to gauge what it would be like to fight Becklin. I have a 90% chance of losing. And even if I did win, that would still be a problem, Sobek calculated the various scenarios in his head. In the end, there was only one decision he could make. Ahem. I apologize, Sobek let out a fake cough and composed himself while putting his sword back in his scabbard. I didn't know you were the vice lord of the heavenly demonic cult. Had I known you were already a part of a martial school, I wouldn't have approached you. We're not a martial school. Don't treat us like we're the same, said Becklin. Anyway. Becklin wiped away the cold sweat on his forehead as he turned around and walked away. Once again, I'm sorry. Farewell then. Yuan watched Sobek walk away in a hurry. Becklim glared at him in discontent. Was it you guys who spread the rumor? Yuan asked. What rumor do you mean? Becklim responded. The one about the vice lord participating in the tournament. Oh, that. Becklim started grinning. The cult members must have blabbered because they were excited to be able to go out into the martial realm again. Those guys are pretty talkative. You one walked ahead while Becklim followed behind. Was your personality always like this? You one asked. I'm always like this when I'm not fighting, sir. Ha ha ha. That unabashed laughter was recognizably Becklim's trademark. You one shook his head while letting out a sigh. You one walked ahead while Becklim followed behind. Are you going to just let that guy go? Becklim asked you one. I don't really know what his deal is. But he's not what's important, Yuan responded. Then what is important? He inquired. 
It seems like the Jigal clan is backing him, you once said. The Jigal clan, you say, sir? Becklin mulled over his words with a slight grin. Well, we have a dinner meeting with the Namgung clan after the tournament. I'll bring it up with them then. If there is foul play going on, it needs to be properly punished. You one responded, a dinner meeting? With the Namgung clan? Would you like to join us, sir? Becklin asked. You one didn't think that the cult that was just now starting to make moves would meet with the Namgung clan so quickly. The heavenly demonic cult, he thought deeply. You one contemplated the potential ripple the cult's activities would cause. I'll pass on the dinner meeting. The meeting was likely just for socialization, and you one was not fond of such gatherings. Just make sure you properly take care of the head of the school of the sapphire sword and his blood brother, you one instructed. Becklin bowed after receiving Yu Wan's orders, as you wish, sir. Yu Wan reached the end of the hallway and knocked at the door of a room. Come in, a voice came from inside the room. It was from Heavenly Demon, Chion Mujin. At the most expensive lodging in the area where you could see a view of the massive stadium outside the window, the Heavenly Demon Chion Mujin was waiting for Yu Wan. Good job, Mujin told Yu Wan while pouring tea for Yu Wan. What did I do to warrant a good job? You one asked? Aren't you on your way back from the preliminaries? Mujin responded. Did you watch it? No. I knew you were going to win, so I didn't see the need, Mujin said while preparing tea. Am I wrong? You one picked up the teacup as Mujin poured him some tea. You never know, you one replied. Suddenly the atmosphere changed as the heavenly demon started pouring tea. Waves of dark mana rushed out from the heavenly demon's body and filled the entire room. The weight of the tea felt like it was a thousand pounds. The flowing tea imbued with Mujin's mana was like a waterfall. Is this a test? Yu Wan wondered. It was a simple but hard test. Yu Wan grumbled while enduring it by imbuing the teacup with his own mana. It was like a large waterfall was falling down into a single point. A small fracture appeared on the teacup. Sweat started to run down Yu Wan's forehead with his lukewarm response. As Yu Wan thought, I can't let it break, mana started to flow out from Kaini. There was a brief second of stability before he felt like darkness was consuming his entire body. Yu Wan wondered, Is Kaini reacting to my emotions? The final drop of tea fell into the teacup, and the cup almost shattered. I see, Mujin said. To normal eyes, one would have just thought it was a scene of someone pouring tea. But for you one, enduring this moment was harder than any fight he had experienced so far in this life. Mujin continued, Why are you participating in something like the Grand Martial Arts Tournament? Your skills don't belong in a children's fight. You one replied I need the prize. Are you talking about the Great Scarlet Medicine Ball? Mujin asked. Yes, you one explained while staring at the cracked teacup, I'm a bit short. He had reached 99 arcane power. How would things have been different if he had 100 arcane power? Don't get caught up by numbers, is the advice I wish I could give, but I know that's not possible, Mujin responded. Unlike you, Lord, I'm not a true martial artist. As long as I have the system, numbers are important, you one replied. I understand. So that's why you need the Great Scarlet Medicine Ball? Said Mujin. It's not guaranteed that consuming it will push me over, but it is quite possible. You one had to overcome this hurdle as quickly as possible, as that was the first condition that he had imposed on himself. The Great Scarlet Medicine Ball is definitely a good elixir. It being the prize is a large reason why the Grand Martial Arts Tournament became such a big event, Mujin spoke while nodding his head having now understood Yuan's motivations. Mujin took a sip of his tea. Parched from having used a good amount of power, Yuan drank from the cracked cup before asking, I'd like to know what brings you here, Lord. I thought the heavenly demonic cult didn't leave Mount Heaven. Mujin responded, I thought it was about time we started our activities. Accepting new cultists, conducting tests, expanding our faction, firmly implanting our influence. Stuff like that. What about Mount Heaven? Yu Wan asked. We'll go back and forth a lot. Technology has advanced a lot in recent years, so it's quite easy to travel. Mujin had decided to be active in the martial realm, 
which was a resolution that would overturn the order and power dynamic of the martial realm in an instant. Will it be okay? Yuan asked. I said it before, but I'm not suited for the role of Vice Lord because I have no intention of being tied down to a single place. I won't be fulfilling my responsibilities while taking advantage of my power. The cult members will probably voice strong opposition, Yuan explained. I am the heaven of the heavenly demonic cult. Since I've acknowledged you, no one can oppose your will, Mujin said with a calm voice. He spoke nonchalantly as if he was talking about undeniable facts like the sun rising in the morning. Because to Mujin, this was the natural order. I could potentially ruin the heavenly demonic cult, Yuan warned. However, that wasn't the only thing Yuan was concerned about. Yuan said I'm an enemy of Olympus. Yuan explained his relationship with Olympus, from rescuing Hephaestus to fighting an Olympian rancor. Mujin nodded along while listening to Yuan's story. I see. The gigantomachy, you say. Having been holed up in Mount Heaven for a long time, Mujin had not experienced the gigantomachy. But the tale was so famous that even he had heard of it. So you're trying to stop that? Mujin asked. Something like that. Yu Wen responded. So in the end, you're going to fight. Mujin's expression did not change. He was not fazed by the potential threat of having to fight a giant enemy like Olympus. Are you okay with all this? Yu Wen asked. Mujin replied you shouldn't avoid setting sail just because you're afraid of the tempest. There's no choice but to just face it. This was good news for Yuan, but he couldn't understand. Technically speaking, he was an outsider to the cult, yet Mu Jin was far too easily agreeing to a path that would be difficult for even blood relatives to face together. And he was going to take the cult along with him. Just when Yuan was confused, Mu Jin spoke up, If you can't understand, just remember this. Nothing else matters. There's only one thing you need to keep in mind as the Vice Lord, Mu Jin spoke, explaining the reason why he had called you one here today. Starting now, you are the heavenly demonic cult. The atmosphere turned silent after Mu Jin words. Yu Wen could not say a word, and his confusion ended. That's all for today. If you like the next part of this manhwa just comment below. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment to get epic content on this channel. See you next time.